Welcome to our presentation. My name is Evil Novakov of Scaleflex. I am the co-founder and CEO, and today we will be speaking about socks, among other things, of course. I have the honor to uh, co-present today with uh, Mr. David Imad from our uh, customer Kunert. And um, I will make a few introductory remarks and then I will invite David and we will be discussing this topic, which um, could be of uh, great importance for some of you. It is about optimizing workflows of media, documents and videos in order to make them ready for distribution uh, to omni channels to for an omni channel strategy well and uh, it's about socks uh, pantyhoses and images and you will uh, understand in a minute what this is all about it is um, about how a company like Kunad and other companies can organize their media prepare their media optimize their media to publish them in an on it channel strategy and it is about such images, so socks, pantyhoses, and so on. But before we get into the concrete topic, I have three questions to wake up the audience because it's 10 o'clock on the Monday morning. We're all getting started. First question, who ever has lost time when searching an image or video in his or her company? Yeah, 50 to 60 percent. Good. Those who have never lost any time have probably never looked for a video or an image. Uh, who of you has uh, left a website because it was too slow for loading the videos, the images, oh, and uh, opted for the competitor instead. This happens to all of us. And who has heard about digital asset management before? Dumb. Uh, this is a topic in the constellation with print. So we have an audience who is aware of these problems and has heard about DOM. And this is exactly what we want to have a closer look at today. David, uh, now I would like to cordially welcome you and invite you uh, to the stage. Good morning, everyone. Can you briefly introduce yourself and your company? Yes, yeah, sure. My name is David Imad. I am the head of IT at Kunat. The Kunat company is uh, probably a household name for some of you, socks. It's about socks, uh, tights, and uh, we've, uh, we're a traditional company. We, we've been in this business for over 100 years. We're part of the Austro Holding Group now uh, in Vienna. We were bought up in 2013 and uh, restructured largely. And in the wake of this restructuring, we of course also touched our um, IT landscape and our infrastructure and strategically rethought it. Let's put it like this. And uh, when I talk about e-commerce, since uh, 2007, Kunat has looked at web shops and on a channel marketing, in other words, words. We, of course, have our own shops. We have shop-in-shops. We had shop-in-shops. And uh, via a web shop uh, channel, we distribute our products. In 2021, leaving the pandemic, which really hit us very hard, uh, we generated 30 million of sales and 10% of these online. And uh, at last, perfect uh, legs. I love my legs. I love my legs as well and every football player says the same thing <laughs> so much uh, for myself and uh uh, Kunat. 10%? Yes, uh, the 10%, 15% are generated by our own shops, and the remaining 75% sales are generated by retailers. Shops, um, Galleria, Kaufhof, for instance, Müller, and the, and the same. Well, first question for you. Uh, David, can you tell us how you actually started uh, questioning better uh, workflows? Uh, what were the pain points you identified? And can you give us some background on how you started working with us? 
Well, in fact, Dam uh, was uh, already familiar to us. We've been doing this uh, for quite a while, since 2007. But um, everywhere the technology is changing, the possibilities are changing. And um, I joined the Kunat company and uh, the pro the processes and structures uh, were actually reassessed also in procedural terms, not only in view of the IT. And we questioned, is uh, what we use today still appropriate? Do I achieve what I want to achieve? Apart from the fact that, uh, that I do not want to touch upon the technical problems, we can uh, do this afterwards if anybody has a question. But... Um, what do I have to do um, within this framework to improve my search, my uh, images, and um, to improve the quality of this? This was the point, and this was the uh, part of uh, point of departure. And this is why we started looking for a different system. What did you use before you implemented the dam? Yeah, um, well, I will only give you the first uh, letter. It was a C, but I won't comment on this any further. Whoever wants to discuss this with me bilaterally, I can answer this question. Well, it is not so much about the manufacturer's name. I simply wanted to know whether you had a dumb system before and why you decided to reassess it, as you said. What were the three biggest pain points? Uh, that you wanted to address, I, um, uh, b removing backgrounds. Yeah, the, the image quality. Um, many of the big buyers, you asked me, um, Galleria, for instance, uh, but we also have Amazon, Zalando, and all of those companies. And each company has its own prerequisites and basic requirements. They say your products will only be listed um, in technical uh, terms uh, on my uh, left hand if they have a gray background the, the other ones say without a background the other say size a and the third one says size b but how are you supposed to do that from one and the same asset and that was one of the biggest challenges and uh, above all the publication s I don't want to have 500,000 clouds to publish my images in full size. But for us, it was important to have one platform and to then use CDN to publish the images, which uh, was or had been a huge uh, challenge so far. In summary, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, first of all... You wanted to ensure that the images uh, are appropriate for the marketplaces, for the channels, with the right background, in the right size, ideally on the fly, so that you don't have to duplicate 10 versions of one asset, which of course uh, uh, causes a problem for versioning. Yeah, we'll talk about this later. And secondly, the publication via CDN links uh, to speed up the process. Yes, definitely. And... Um, uh, the first point, uh, removing backgrounds and resizing of the image. This is uh, two pain points you mentioned in one. Y uh, you wanted to comment on archiving. Yes, versioning. No, archiving, versioning. The images change. Um, one and the same product um, so far had an image in color A. Uh, we wanted to freshen it up and we wanted to use it for a cover, for print maybe. And there you also want to introduce uh, changes. And at the same time, you also want to track the changes without uh, having to touch it uh, from scratch. So the so-called versioning, w w without changing the CDN link, mega. So... I actually provide my users with a new image without they without having to do anything or change anything at their end they automatically access the latest image and um, this is, of course, a huge benefit for us in cooperation with customers. You don't have to tell them, oh, wait, watch out, new version, new link, don't access this, please retrieve that. 
So we solved this uh, issue in, in one go and a one consistent data source. This was probably also one of the points you mentioned. Um, a dumb system is supposed to do that to have all data in one place. Could you now uh, tell us a bit about the process, how you invited for tender? Did you internal this or did you work with a partner? What were the top selection criteria? Some were already discussed and um, why did you opt in favor of us? Well, in fact, um, we did, uh, we invited uh, for tender um, with the departments. There are many departments uh, that have a share in this. The IT basically is only um, the manager of such a project. But in terms of content and in terms of requirements, they are actually submitted by the departments. And we have, our catalog, uh, catalog uh, consisted of 70 individuals requirements which we defined together with the colleagues and they also factored in workflows just to give you an example the use rights um, huge topic the rights of use in license uh, legislation terms so when you actually feature faces you have a whole person and this person only makes available these images under certain conditions then you have a right of use for a defined period and then you you have to manage these um, uh, periods um, when you actually have to unpublish such an image. So in procedural terms, from the uh, release uh, to the uh, check, the content check, all the way down to publication and the end of, end of life, the uh, unpublishing of this image and this image. These uh, are procedural things uh, that are underlying and we also factored these in. So this is a crucial point. A crucial point uh, was uh, to create this catalog. I think we have uh, uh, five yeah, we asked five suppliers and one of them was Scaleflex and we were basically uh, swept out of our socks in inverted commas. Respect. Thank you. Uh, to, to, to stay with the wording. <laughs> How many uh, products and SKUs or uh, images do you have? Okay. SKUs, uh, stock keeping units, you're all aware of this term. Um, I think we have... Um, uh, uh, sizes, by colors, by styles, I think actively we have around 18,000 SKUs when you look at all of the combinations. And it's probably interesting to note that uh, you do not need a different image for each size. And this also needs to be categorized and managed and ensured that we have the same image for various sizes, also for link products, and that the same image is used. And this, of course, requires a dam system, whether regardless of whether this is ours or somebody else's uh, system. One use case that you mentioned um, referred to the copyright uh, things. Um, uh, we can see an uh, image of a model where the face is cut off. Do you have scenarios where there is a, a model with a face that you're only allowed to use for a certain period of time? Yes, true. So after the period has extinguished, this asset must either be archived or it must be unpublished. Do you think it would make sense if the uh, system automatically cut off the face and only show the rest? Or do you really have to uh, unpublish the complete um, image? Oh, the creative uh, directors are going berserk right now. <laughs> um, no, in legal terms. Well, I am not a, a lawyer. And this is why it is very hard for me to judge. I think you have to unpublish the whole image. But honestly speaking, if I don't see the face, then anybody could be featured in this picture. I don't know. I can't answer this question. Just an idea that that I had because I could see this cut image. Maybe this is um, just a coincidence. 
Yeah, usually the complete uh, body is included in the right of use. Good to know. We have uh, seen some pain points that we touched upon and some requirements, but now I think it's interesting to actually look at the context um, and to briefly introduce uh, to dam systems, not ours, but in general. The aim of a dam system is to create the asset. This can be a video, an audio piece, a document, a PDF, an instruction, manuals, a technical document, but it can also be an Adobe file because we're at a print uh, day here. So this is and then 360 degree views of products uh, are also assets. So on the left hand side, we've got the process that uh, creates the assets. On the right hand side, we've got a wide variety of uh, uh, platforms or rather channels because we're speaking about an omni-channel strategy. And you want to distribute to these channels in an optimized and quick fashion to e-commerce, CMS or lending pages, for instance, uh, for advertising campaigns to push the new uh, collection, for instance. And um, you have, of course, tailor-made uh, landing pages through CMS. Then customers, of course, want to use Twitter and other social media, and they want to have an image, GIF, or whatever. Um, E-commerce was already mentioned, marketing, printing. So these are the channels uh, for distribution. And in the center, we've got a few things that need to happen before we get from creation to publication. And um, the center is really at the heart of a dam system to optimize everything. And this works through various metadata, tagging, pool processes, using AI as well to simplify matters. There are a few interesting things uh, you can already do with uh, AI to moderate content, for example, or to automatically tag content. Just recently for Conrad, uh, this is the electrical uh, company, developed an algorithm to um, uh, distinguish uh, product images and application images. Is this incandescent lamp really a product image or is it an application image? Because somebody touches uh, this lamp and uh, inserts this into a fitting. This, this can be solved with uh, AI. Um, AI is not intelligent. It's artificial, but it's not intelligent. It could be referred to as an artificial assistance. The things can be done with AI, uh, as is shown here. Then there's a wide variety of workflows um, from categorization to synchronization in third party provider systems. And we will also look at the systems where the assets are pushed into. Then various transformations. I have an image and I would remove the background. This can also be done by uh, AI. Um, or the background can be replaced, uh, gray, blue, whatever. And um, in the center, we've got the operations or the transformations um, that are needed uh, for such assets. The converting from a big 300 megabyte GIF da um, file to a small high level or dash for e-commerce. Compressing is important. Then transcoding, you speak of transcoding for videos. You have a huge video or product video that you convert into uh, modern web um, formats like WebM or through for data streaming uh, using such uh, protocols as HiLev or Dash uh, to uh, get the same experience on YouTube. Um, you know that the quality actually uh, caters to the bandwidth of your device. This can also be achieved with videos that are not hosted by YouTube. And acceleration is, of course, extremely important. If the assets are too slow, then um, customers will leave the website, the landing page. This is what a dumb system should offer to our mind. And this brings me to my next question. Okay, you have a rolled out a damn system. Uh, what is it integrated with? Well, first of all, um, as I initially said, it is important that uh, we, we actually re-evaluated our IT landscape to see 
um, we need a system uh, that allows us to adapt uh, um, to an existing landscape or a new landscape. We at Kunat uh, uh, use Dynamics PC, uh, Business Central by Microsoft. And this is the first integration uh, via uh, an interface connection. And SKU-based, uh, we actually sort the images by types. This can be a document. Um, the asset can also be a video or it could be an image. We don't care. For us, uh, this is asset types. And each per SKU, we actually get the CDN link for the SKU, the number. And then we uh, I integrate this into our system. And from there, we have the connections to all types of platforms via the data hub. So I can actually uh, distribute to any platform. If a customer approaches me and says, I need your data, um, then I actually create a data hub profile and say this, 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 this. This is metadata, by the way. And these metadata are compiled for this customer. Then CDN links are provided of a cover for instance or of a specific application case or a video and then I push over the data because this is in part also print data um, to uh, print posters for instance they of course have to comply with the specific formats pixels and all of this can be sh pushed out centrally and this was or is one of the central improvements uh, versus what we had before. And above all, if the asset changes, if somebody from marketing says we no longer d uh, use image A but uh, image B, the link is the same, my uh, system remains unchanged, and the user, uh, this could also be a supplier, it must not necessarily be the customer, um, the user sees no change whatsoever and he always ends up with the latest information. As uh, Dieter Bohlen puts it, mega a German uh, singer. Um, you also use your ERP system as PIM. There are two simultaneous conferences on PIM and this is also the system uh, where you synchronize uh, the links. Yeah, hub and lifestyle management. Yeah, it's integrated. And this is why we have these benefits. Well, you mentioned metadata. How important are metadata for you and how do you lose them in your dam system? This is really the the, the heart of it. Um, if uh, I uh, actually get images, uh, um, uh, well, Google wouldn't work if I if you didn't have the keywords. And the same applies to metadata on on this platform. We of course uh, upload them with the assets, and uh, the user um, then has access to these data. He can say. Uh, I want to see all socks uh, that contain some red as a color or uh, all in size X only or um, whatever. If we talk about sustainability as a topic, for instance, um, only the socks with specific eco standard uh, tags or uh, symbols. All of these things can be searched. The customer can look for all of these metadata and use them for filtering and then actually search and pick uh, the images including the parameters. This is exciting. Um, if you would said um, a few years ago, yes, you can sort images by size or uh, rights of use or eco uh, labels, uh, uh, I would have said there's no system available to do this today with the dam system. It's possible to do. Yeah, you, you wouldn't have you wouldn't have the data because there were no eco labels around. Not true. They, they have been around for 20 years. Uh, oh, yeah, we can talk about that. Yeah, yeah, let us let us talk about it. What about the migration? How did this happen? How did you migrate the data, including the meta metadata? Um, uh, well, I have to say that this uh, in terms of efforts, uh, uh, it was the biggest effort we, we undertook. 
the to prepare the data in such a fashion that on the one hand you have the assets on the one hand side which you need to upload that you then enrich or link them with some metadata a unique identifier in order to identify, to be able to identify the asset, to then upload this and then in the following step to then take further metadata from my ERP for enriching. When, if I had had the SKU number, um, the unique identifier, then you've got this asset, uh, you upload it with the SKU value and then you look into your ERP system or your PIM system basically and look what else is available in terms of information that would have the same identifier and then you push them uh, up. Of course, uh, we had to be able to, to have these data fields, to create these data fields through thanks to Scaleflex. And this was uh, heavy. Um, you've got images in a wide variety of formats and uh, um, SVLK was, uh, was, was such an issue and uh, then certain sizes, uh, image sizes or videos. This was not easy, but everything is, is doable and uh, we were able to automate it at the end of the day um, uh, to push up or to upload hundreds of images together with the metadata after we've taken the first step and decided which metadata will be retained and um, and uh, you then decide these are the metadata that we will need one or two questions rather yes How long did the whole migration take? Well, the migration or the whole project? The whole project, yeah, the whole project. Um, well, um, the uh, migration was pretty fast. It was three weeks, but it took us uh, n another nine weeks uh, to be able to really roll it out. So all in all, 12 weeks roughly to have clean data plus metadata uploaded. You said 18,000 SKUs? Yes. As 18,000 SKUs. In images, this should be around 12,000 maybe if you were between, yeah, yeah, roughly around 10,000 to max 12,000 assets. And was the number of assets a decisive criteria for the migration or could you scale it up to 4 million assets? Well, um, it does play a role because you. Uh, this is, of course, a procedural issue, but in technical terms, it's not a criterion. But what was key was to um, sort out our image data and we had to prepare this image data in such a fashion that we could upload the images, the assets. And this takes time, so this was an internal procedural problem rather than a technical issue. And now we've done this once for one collection. Uh, it only takes a few hours to, to actually do it for the next collection. And uh, we are called uh, Scaleflex because we want to help our customers to scale um, their business uh, flexibly. And this means uh, that we can upload higher amounts of data in a shorter while. We just completed um, a migration of Leclerc. This is the biggest retailer in France with uh, sales of 70 billion and they have uh, 25 million million assets and they were actually migrated via the AP in two weeks so the number is not what counts it's the data preparation that takes the time uh, many attributes well, how many attributes no many many um, that in PIM you have very many, but um, um, I would uh, uh, assess uh, around 50, but uh, they are not uploaded initially, they're enriched first and uh, uploaded, parked there basically, then enriched and then they're published. And time will tell whether we really need them all or whether we actually could have saved a few, but better to have enough than too 
few. Last question, David. We're at the print days, and we're speaking of um, the physical delivery of assets. Uh, what do you do in terms of print with packaging images in DAM? What are the use cases there? Well, in fact, um, we want to provide our customers with the biggest uh, flexibility possible. for filling certain spaces with images. Our customers uh, have the free choice, have the liberty to download images, to print them out on media, be it uh, billboards, posters, displays. I, I, I'm, I'm not so so uh, knowledgeable about this. How, how you call uh, these, um, the, the covers, the, the, the packages? Yeah, the packages, the yeah, or the envelopes, yeah, exactly. And um, each uh, customer can do this for the products uh, they want to promote, and they can place it themselves. And this is why it was important to you to have the possibility to uh, deliver the images in original format, to download them in the original format. Full resolution, so that the users can actually control their prints. I'm Galeria, for instance, I want to run a campaign and present the latest Kuna collection to generate sales. I can register in the DEM system, look uh, um, or search what I need from this uh, collection, download the images and send it to my print shop. Yes, and removed background is, is so helpful here. Well, thank you very much, David. Um, a few words on uh, us, uh, who we are and what we do. And then we have a few minutes uh, uh, for questions. Kateflex is a French company, but uh, have been in Germany for one year now. I am based in Munich myself for 12 years. Uh, we've been around. We have over 85 staff, serve over 600 uh, customers in over 50 countries worldwide and manage over 150 million digital assets and deliver over 1.5 petabyte of uh, um, uh, information worldwide. We are members of the Mac Alliance. Uh, are you familiar with the Mac Alliance? No? Microservice API Cloud and Headless? Mach. This is alliance of software vendors, manufacturers and partners, implementation partners who work in this best of breed composable architecture where the best CMS is combined with the best TIM or DUM instead of uh, going for a monolithic system uh, that is extremely uh, costly in terms of license costs and requires a lot of implementation efforts. I, no names. Um, we're known uh, as one of the top 12 dumb vendors worldwide. Last year, we, um, we also work uh, as sponsors of this event and we do a digital asset uh, landscape and we were ad identified as a strong performer last year. We have mainly do e-commerce publishing various media and I will show you some German references that you're familiar with in real estate really real estate where there are many images and videos these are the three segments we serve and oh, I'm going to show you a little video later we have two solutions um, that we produce we started with cloud image 12 years ago um, this is a image CDM to compress images on the fly to produce various sizes uh, on the basis of one master and to actually accelerate by CDN link. Our first big uh, customer was Heiser.de. All of the images there w are managed by us. And the benefit is, of course, beautiful and quick images loading faster. This is good for the SEO. Um, the Corp App Vitals, you're probably uh, aware of this in uh, corporate marketing. When the landing pages are too slow, then you have uh, poor corporate vitals, and then you're ranked down. This is how we got started, then uh, grew big, although we're still small and agile. And over time, customers asked me, can we also upload? Uh, can you host of all of our assets? And um, instead of offering storage or hosting, we actually um, uh, in 
uh, actually uh, opened or rolled out the file robot solution. This is a headless uh, dumb um, to be used uh, with an upload API and a um, uh, distribution API. But we quickly saw uh, that it is hard to sell APIs to uh, e-commerce people and marketing people because the LFPs, the tenders for dumb, are usually done by e-commerce teams and dumb people or people dealing with uh, PIM and there an API is very hard to sell and this is why over the past two years we focused on a nice UX in order to have a collaborative time with Flogforce and graphic uh, opportunities or options and the value of the DOM is of course an improved integration and collaboration and integration of the stack uh, to have the workflows uh, simplified and optimized uh, which um, uh, saves money at the end of the day. Um, a, a few references? Three minutes? Okay. This is my last chart. The last chart. Uh, who do we work with in Germany? Heise is our historical customer, but our biggest customer is Tom. We actually manage all uh, the Tom assets uh, with uh, 100 terabytes. During COVID, uh, Tom really exploded by a factor of 10 because everybody started DIYing in their in their garden uh, when we were in lockdown. I mean, group. This is Kimowelt in Germany. Hüsenbeck, you, Liqui Moly, Formula One racing. This is the oil. Kunert, we talked about it. And uh, this is the 40 million or 30 million uh, per uh, month. We also manage this in Hugendubel I mean, in publishing. I think this is also a household name. Well, if there are any questions, we've got one and a half minutes uh, for one or two questions. <laughs> If you want to know more about us, we don't have a stand though, but uh, David and I will be around today and tomorrow. So approach us and uh, we can talk about a few use cases, about models, images and so on. And uh, I'd be happy to hear from you again. Thank you. Thank you.